Okay, today is the International Day of Pink, and I feel it's a great time to share another message. Um, last time I tried sharing a message based on a day, I was reading a script. This one's going to be the other way around, uh, back to my normal type of flow. Um, the International Day of Pink is... Uh, largely rooted uh, towards the younger generation, and that's because it is focused on cyberbullying. And when a lot of us continue to think of cyberbullying, we think of elementary school antics for all intents and purposes, and foul language on video games and whatnot. And that's not to say that doesn't exist. It is absolutely part of what cyberbullying is. But if we take away a lot of those metrics, if we take away a lot of those the stereotypes of what cyberbullying is, it is an abuse of privilege by a person who feels they can speak how they want without consequence through the power of anonymity or inaccessibility or something along those lines. If we were to think of the real world and like myself, I'm 39, so let's rewind back to when I was nine. We were all taught that when it comes to bullying, because the internet wasn't anywhere near what, what it is today, obviously, but we were all taught that when there's bullying, it's somebody looking for validation because essentially of a whatever their own life challenges are, and they're taking it out on others because they don't know how to cope with themselves. And then by ignoring them, what that also does is it prevents the validation that they're looking for to affirm their feelings, to affirm their beliefs, and to take away their muscle, right? By taking away their opportunity to feel as if their position is valid, it mitigates the bullying because then at some point when they realize that they don't have any friends and they don't have any peers supporting them and they continue to be in trouble or get ostracized or or whatnot the goal ultimately would be for some internal reflection from those bullies and recognize that they were wrong the whole time the challenge is that mindset has not evolved. And that's a problem because the world has evolved significantly. And the belief of just ignore bullying isn't valid anymore because unlike a limited population in an elementary school or a high school, or a workplace, or a social setting. These users have validation coming from all corners of the world who share similar beliefs. And so that validation continues, regardless of how much they get ignored by their victims. Does that make sense? That ignoring the victim or the victim ignoring the abuser doesn't have the same result that we expected to happen 30 years ago, but our policying still assumes that it works. So dear everybody, wake the fuck up. Cyberbullying compared to in-person bullying, if we were to call it that, is ridiculously dangerous because all of the boundaries that used to be able to be taken care of, such as a physical location like a school or like I said, um, an event, right, that people would end up being at commonly or individuals or certain hours of the day where accessibility was a thing, those were all barriers that in some way limited what bullying could be like. Cyberbullying, for all intents and purposes, is infinite. 
There is no time of day that says it's okay or not okay or available or not available. There are so many ways to find somebody who becomes a victim of cyberbullying and then to relentlessly go after those individuals. Because as I mentioned just a couple moments ago, the barriers don't exist. The barrier that should exist is policying to identify and eliminate not the behavior, but the source. Individuals are a reflection of the environment that they grow up in. Everybody. So when it comes to cyberbullying, it's easy to get frustrated at the individuals who are abusive. And in a past life, we would always blame the parents. You're right. Lots of times parents need to maybe hug a little stronger. But when it's all said and done, the checks to say, no, no, this is not allowed. And here's the consequence because of it is so great. It's 2021 and cyberbullying bills are still like open, at least in Manitoba. And in, uh, in Canada, it, it is a federal offense, or it's a, it's a criminal offense. But the policying of identifying and acting on it is still great. And that's where the challenge comes in. Because it is so easy for people to say two things. One... Just turn your back to it, right? Who, just, just ignore them. And everyone who says that, I have no idea how to articulate the words, are you that fucking stupid, any kinder. Turning your back on abuse doesn't end abuse. Turning your back on abuse does not stop an abuser from being abusive. That is, it's such a dismissive, privileged thing to say. It is dismissive and privileged. And for every person to ever suggest to somebody being on the receiving end of abuse, regardless if it's cyberbullying in the spirit of today or any other type of abuse, to say, ignore that person, they're wrong, and live your life, does not address the, the scope of harm that can come from somebody who's unhinged for all intents and purposes. Cyberbullying is a monster because of how it grows. And the like-minded individuals spreading their message with, with, with no hesitation and to share that message with more people, to be more abusive to one victim. So how does turning your back on abuse stop the, the abuse, right? I'm not saying everyone needs to run right into battle. That's not the message. But to make it clear that there is support and the ecosystem that the abuse is happening in does not foster the abuse. That's what's supposed to be done. And everyone's too fucking afraid 
to stand up because they don't want to get abused either. Hey, newsflash. Just like think about, oh, I don't want to get in there because then I'm going to get picked on. Open up that brain there and just realize the message that you just told yourself. This is shitty and doesn't belong, but I don't want to be part of it because I'm afraid. Stand up with your peers then and put it away. So aside from people saying just ignore it and move on. Cool, that's fine. Without recognizing, like I mentioned, the potential, the scope of what abuse, online abuse can, can, can do. Sure, great idea. Thanks for exercising your privilege. Been there, done that, don't need it. And nobody else who's a victim of cyberbullying needs to hear. So try again. Then the second one is, Run to the police. Sure, that's great. Remember that time when cops just keep killing people because they're not supposed to? They don't really have it all together about the rights and wrongs. I'm not saying that all cops are bad, but I also assure that policing isn't good. I've said it in my last YouTube video. I don't trust the Winnipeg police with my near dying body. And a lot of the reason behind that, when it comes to running to the police, is because the mentality of cyberbullying is the idea of it being very petty, regardless of who it is. It doesn't matter if it's a 12 year old just getting victimized by a bunch of teammates. It doesn't matter if it's a trans woman being on the receiving end of transphobia and constant allegations of being a pedophile, right? You know, that's not really a cool thing, but hey, right? Just not saying that's an example of something I'm dealing with, but it fucking is. But hey, that's, that, that's right? Come on, Winnipeg police, right? Jump right in there, idiots. So running to the police is such a low level solution because it is so much more encumbering than it needs to be. Speaking of personal experience, that I get assigned a detective who admits to me they're not familiar with a social media platform. And the fact that I pretty much have to do all the work to identify what is happening to get them engaged because it's not as fun as running around and putting his handcuffs on people as people think that it is. For social services who I'd be communicating with about awareness, thinking this magical idea in their head that the Winnipeg police or the RCMP or whoever the balls are just gonna knock on somebody's door and be like, you're not being nice and then put some handcuffs on them and then everybody wins. Are you that? <laughs> like, where's the thought process of how it works? Those are two most common solutions that get advised to victims of cyberbullying, online abuse, and even personal abuse, like in real life or whatever. Ignore it or run to a system that doesn't really care about it. So I'm gonna propose a third solution which is something I have proposed repeatedly that is the right solution and it is anybody who witnesses cyberbullying or anybody who gets approached to ask to help to eliminate cyberbullying, fucking do something about it. You get approached because you are trusted 
You are approached because the analysis of your potential says, I believe you have the means to help this situation. People approach platforms, systems, organizations, and name it, not out of boredom. but out of requirement. And for these organizations to be dismissive and not recognize the message that's being sent and instead stand behind their performativeness. And I underline performativeness because you would have not been approached in the first place if you did not give the impression that you gave a shit at all. And so exercising your performativeness instead of your action only makes things worse. For you to witness cyberbullying, online abuse, in whatever forms, regardless if it's a straight up call out of somebody saying, I'm being harassed. If you see visible racism, if you see transphobia, if you see ableism, if you see any other type of discrimination and you don't act on it, where are your values? So if you mean it, do it. Not saying everyone needs to be a soldier 24 seven. That's not an ask and that's not realistic. But we're all taught to call shit out when we see it. We're all taught that if we experience racism right in front of us, to call it out and put an end to it right then and there. So what makes that any different in 2021? When you see it happening online, and not just 2021, but 2021 in a world where we're told to stay home and essentially have any type of communication in any type of interaction in any type of social experience online. We're literally in a place where online isn't fantasy land anymore. So what happens online is a reflection of what happens on the sidewalks. And so if we're all taught to call shit out when we see it, and we're more than proud to go ahead and do it on the sidewalks, what's the disconnect about doing it when you're sitting in your goddamn pajamas playing on your laptop? It's easier that way and you still can't do it. And the times that you're asked to do it, you find reasons why it's not right for you to go ahead and speak up. It is pitiful, it is pathetic, and it needs to end immediately. Cyberbullying in practice has, has one MO, essentially. Because there's a difference between somebody just having a passive opinion, whether or not it's agreed with or not, and then targeted harassment. Okay? There is a difference. Cyberbullying and real life bullying, whatever, the agenda is to abuse a victim to submission and whatever form of submission it is whether to get that person to disappear from the abuser's experience, up to and including the potential of suicide. People kill themselves because of cyberbullying because it is inescapable with the way that the world is right now. People are embarrassed to talk about cyberbullying because of the stigma associated with, oh, you're getting picked on. You must be weak. Personally, I'm the farthest thing from weak. If I've got attention, it means I'm doing something right. But my mindset's pretty different than most others. I'm redirecting energy and creating solutions 
but there are others who are significantly younger who don't know how to do that yet and feel like at their age, it's inescapable. And the only solution is to die. It is a real thing. And the fact that it's not taken seriously is despicable. Save the kids. Save the kids, all about the kids. Then fucking act like it now.